Hey, this week is a, is a pretty important week for National Guardsmen across the nation, especially this Friday. This Friday is the 14th uh, commemoration of 9-11, uh, 2001, on that fateful day when uh, our country was attacked. And as Guardsmen and future Guardsmen, all of our lives changed on that day. I want to share a, a little story with you about where I was on 9-11. And I ask maybe that you reflect on where you were on 9-11 and how that day affected you and your family and uh, our great nation and uh, the years that came after that. Now, I was a prior service active duty soldier in the early 80s in the 2nd Ranger Battalion. And my family, my, my wife and I decided that we were going to become National Guardsmen. We, uh, she was uh, finished being an, an active duty spouse. And with that came our decision to uh, leave the Army, and we both decided that we wanted to become school teachers. So as we left the Army, I loved the Army, and I, I didn't want to leave the Army completely, so uh, we, talked and, uh, I, we talked and I was allowed, we agreed, that I could join the Oregon Army National Guard. So for the next 18 years as a student, and after I got my degree as a school teacher, I served as a Mobilization Day and M-Day soldier, from 1986 through basically 2003. And as I got my degree and, and my wife and I became uh, school teachers and, and we uh, balanced life and family and employers and the National Guard, I rose to the rank of first sergeant on uh, September 11th, 2001. I was a first sergeant in Bravo Company 2162 Infantry. And my company was headquarters, headquartered in Corvallis, Oregon. So on that morning, you know, school had just started, just like uh, you and your families are starting school this week. Uh, we'd been in school maybe, you know, a week or so. And I, I was an early riser and, and uh, went to school early. And Laura usually had the duty of, of getting the kids ready for school. And she started her day a little bit later than I, but I always went to school early because I was coaching a lot of sports. I was, I was coaching football that year. And I was at school getting lesson plans ready for the day, and, and uh, Laura gave me a phone call, called me at work, and said, hey, hon, you need, to, you need to look at the TV. Something's going on. Something's going on in New York City, and, and a tower was hit by an airplane. Well, I didn't have a TV in my classroom, so I ran down to the library, and I wasn't the first one there. There were other teachers gathered around watching the news. Now, if you remember, the first attack was uh, early in the morning in New York, around 9.30ish, right around there. Well, that's 6.30 Oregon time, so we hadn't even started school yet. We're an hour and a half from starting school. And so we're watching the news, and uh, teachers are gathered around in the library, and, and all of a sudden that second tower got hit. And if you recall, the pundits were trying to find, figure out what the heck was going on. And there were many planes still in the air, and, and they were talking about, hey, maybe there's going to be attacks on other U.S. cities. Maybe Chicago's next, or L.A., or, or Atlanta. And uh, I became scared and nervous and, and wondered about what was going to happen on the West Coast. So I looked at my principal, and I said, ma'am, you know, I'm a first sergeant. I'm a leader. I'm a leader in the National Guard, and our, uh, our nation's under attack. I have to go. And she looked at me without even a hesitation and said, well, you go. We got you covered. We're, we're probably going to be talking about this all day. And I said, okay, I got to go. So I, I went and uh, grabbed my uniform and I got in the car. And I'm driving to Corvallis. It's about a 45-minute drive. And I'm trying to figure out what in the heck's going on. And I'm listening to the radio. And I'm sure the same thing was going on across the nation. And I'm trying to make sense of it all. What in the hell is happening here? And I drove the 45 minutes to the armory. And normally there, on a weekday, there's just a couple cars there. The readiness NCO, training NCO, and the, the supply sergeant are usually the only ones at the armory. And so there's two or three cars there. When I got to the armory, there were 15 to 20 cars there. And I walked into the armory. I was not the first one there. There were already 10 to 15 soldiers gathered around and saying, yeah, first sergeant, we're ready. We're here. Our nation's under attack. We're ready to do whatever we need to do. And I, uh, on that day, I, I looked around. And I said, this is, this is what it means to be a citizen soldier. Not one person got a phone call. There was not an alert. 
There was there was no the battalion headquarters and or the state headquarters did not say guardsmen report to your armories. Those men just came of their own accord. They dropped what they were doing. They knew their nation was under attack, and they showed up to that armory. Now, they brought every weapon that they owned in the house and every bit of ammunition they had, and they said, we're ready for a sergeant. And I said, uh, well, let's put that stuff in the arms room. Let's secure that. I don't know that we're at that, at that level yet. But on that day, I knew what it meant to be a citizen soldier really for the first time in my entire life. I felt like I had a connection with those militiamen, those Minutemen in 1775 that responded to the call that the Redcoats are coming and they dropped their blacksmith tools or their pens if they were teachers or their innkeeper tool, you know, the, the plates and forks and linen if they were an innkeeper and they grabbed their musket and they reported to Lexington and Concord to do what guardsmen have always done to defend our homeland, defend our communities, defend our families, and do what our uh, communities need us to do in time of need. So to wrap up, I know this is a little bit of a long story. What, I'm ask, what I want you to do is, is think about, if you were in the, the guard at that time, what was, I know there's stories like my story uh, across the nation. Reflect back on, on those days if you were in uniform. And if you weren't in uniform, I'm sure that day affected you that brought you to the National Guard as you became of age. Or even if you were already of age and had not served before, that day may have turned you uh, into a selfless servant and made you join the service and maybe later became a guardsman. I think this Friday is an important day. I think it changed the course of, the, of National Guard history. And I ask that you uh, commemorate and reflect on Patriot Day this Friday and try to find something internally that uh, tells your story and then try to take that internally and express it externally to those around you and, and those that you come in contact with. So uh, with that, uh, I'll sign off. Uh, Command Sergeant Major Brunt Conley, guardsmen out there everywhere, I appreciate everything that you do.